I love programming on the Mega 65, but you can't always carry it around with you. And as you know, I have created the perfect traveling Mega 65 with my Lenovo ThinkPad and these great key cap stickers, and it works really well. But programming in the Mega 65 environment can be a little limiting. Let's just say that. Uh, some features that you really would like to have, copy paste, some of those other things uh, can really slow you down. So what I have done is I have figured out how to use the great Commodore Program Studio with the XEMU emulator on my Windows ThinkPad to streamline that process and give me a much better and much more robust programming environment for basic programming, which is what I primarily do, on and for the Mega 65. So let's go ahead and take a look at that and how I configured this Windows machine to make it a great development on the go machine for basic programming. Okay, a few things you need to do first. First of all, you need to have the XEMU emulator installed on your device. Now I'm working in Windows because the Commodore Program Studio is not available for any other platform, which is unfortunate. I'd love to be able to do this on a Mac or Linux box, but this is why I have this singular Windows machine. As you can see, we have XEMU running right here. Everything's configured. By the way, if you need to know how to install XEMU, I do have a few blog posts available on my website, retrocombs.com. Be sure and check those out. Okay, you see XEMU is running fine. Let's load up CBM Program Studio, and you can see it pops up right there. And I'm using version 4.0.1, which is, as of this video, the latest version. Now, to get this working, you've got to configure Commodore Program Studio correctly to attach to the XEMU emulator. And that's what I'm going to show you how to do here. That's the secret sauce. But before I do, let me go ahead and load up a project I'm working on. Now, Program Studio includes a whole bunch of tools that I'm not going to spend a lot of time in this video detailing. But just take a look at some of these options in these menus up here, and you can see that there are a lot of tools to help you develop for not only the Mega 65, but for all Commodore computers. I mean, take a look at this. We can create a new project, save, yes. Look at all these computers we can target for. C64, C128, VIC-20 with memory expansion, pets, C16 or plus four, and of course the new added machine mega 65 if you're doing some things in assembler you can see that you also have access to use kick assembler in conjunction with commodore program studio now again i'm focused today on the mega 65 and using commodore program studio for that platform so if i go in here and do next you'll see that we can give it a name and we'll call this uh, mega 65 cbm test now that's probably, it's gotta be within 16 characters. Let's go ahead and make it mega 65 dash test. Let's do that right there. The executable name here is that dot PRG, you can see that. One of the annoying things about this software, and you're gonna see this through the setup, is it doesn't have a file selector to select locations. You have to type those in manually. And I pull up the properties and that usually works well for me. And you can see a summary, we'll create that. And now what we'll do is we'll come up to project, we'll add a new item. And in this case, we're going to want a basic file, but you can see a lot of different file types you can add here, uh, including SID sound files, assembly files, sequential files. We just want a basic file. We'll give it a file name. And again, we're working in the studio, but we can do multiple basic programs in studio. We're gonna call it the same thing, mega 65 test. And now you see that we have our IDE open and ready to accept basic programs. And we can start with 10, we can start with print, and you'll notice it has some auto completion features here, which is really nice. Uh, you can do that. And let's just do, um, let's do hello world. Yeah, let's do mega 65 programmers. And then we'll come over here. And you'll notice when we hit enter, it automatically continues our line numbering, another nice feature. 
Good thing is we have access to our cursor keys. We can move through lines. And again, takes away some of those limits that we would have in the Mega 65. So how do we send this to the Mega 65 or not the Mega 65 in this case, but the XEMU emulator so that we can see if this works. So here's, the, here's what you need to do. We're gonna go up to tools. We're gonna come to options. And you'll see a whole host of options here. We have our project options. You'll see you can change your targets, some other things. Again, we're not gonna go into detail this is just to get you set up so that you can start learning to use Commodore Program Studio with the XEMU emulator. You'll see we have general here. Now all of this, and I've got some kind of issue here. I'm not sure why it's cutting off over here. It's always enough you can kind of see what they're getting, but you don't need any of those for what we're trying to do today. You see assembler, tools, fonts, all kinds of stuff that you can change. If you want the default fonts to be different, you can do that. Uh, you have uh, basic constants. You can see some values here for that. You have emulator control. That's the one we want. And what we're going to do is we're going to set up our emulator control options to be on Mega 65. Then what you need to do is find that path to the emulator, which is the xmega65.exe. Now, if you have installed it using the installer, you should be able just to copy this path right here. C colon backslash program files backslash xemu backslash xmega65.exe. If you've modified the location, where that is installed, you're gonna to have to change that. So remember that. You want your emulator parameters to be the dash PRG and then the percent PRG, that is the default, you should be okay. And then you want it to close emulator if it's already running. The reason we wanna do that is, is if you're gonna reset and reload. Uh, and on a fast Windows machine, that's pretty quick. So we'll leave it that way. So we're gonna go ahead and say, okay. Now, once we have that set, it's pretty easy at this point. We just want to go up here to build and you can say build our program and run, or we can do an F5. This is what I love about this. If I hit function F5, watch what happens. It's gonna build, it's gonna load XEMU, and it's going to run that program. And you can see it down here, it says, hello, C <laughs> well, it says mega um, uh, 65 programmers because those should be in lowercase. So you've got some things that you have to work with. So if I come back over here, I should have changed this, but this is the beauty, right? That didn't work out. Let's change that back to mega. And let's hit function F5 again and test it again. And you'll see how quick you can test out your change. And there you go. And it's working. So it's a great way to start programming in BASIC for the Mega 65, where you can really get to all of those features like the character editor here, the screen editor. If you want to build a screen and save that to BASIC, it again is supported on the Mega 65. Renumber tools, statistics things that just make programming in BASIC so much easier. So here's a quick example of a program I have been working on, and you can see it's pretty lengthy. Uh, it's not too long at this point, but this would be a little more difficult to work on the Mega 65 because I would only get about, you know, to about there and up on a screen at a time. The other thing you'll notice is that using an IDE like this, you can do things like advanced commenting. So what is this program? Well, you'll just have to subscribe, like, comment below, and stay tuned. Eventually, I'll get this thing released. If you kind of look through it, you might be able to figure out what it is, but it is far from complete. Got a long way to go, but at least now I have the tool I need to get this done, and I can do this on the go without having to schlep a Mega 65 or my dev kit around with me. So hopefully you enjoyed that quick video to show you how you can set up your Commodore Program Studio to work with the Mega 65 and program. Uh, if you like that video and you want to know more about the Mega 65, check out this video. And if you want some additional Mega 65 information, check out this video at this time. Retro Combs out. Thanks for watching.